This is the Steiner T1XI. It is Steiner's traditional tubular style red dot featuring 11 lighting modes, nine for day and two for night vision. It also has three reticle options. One is a two MOA dot. Another is a two MOA dot with a 60 MOA circle. And then the last is a 60 MOA circle alone for those 60 MOA shots. But before we go deep inside of this, let's talk about our sponsors. Infinity Targets is 15% off, Matthew's Fabrication is 10% off, and Hot Munitions, who provides all of our ammo, is 5% off. Use code NANNERS for all of those percentages off. <laughs> now, right off the bat, let's talk about the price. It is 700 shillings, that's right. Uh, not super cheap, but also not the most expensive. It is a premium optic, uh, and we will compare all those other similar optics later on in the video. Before I go any further, I should disclose that I did receive this optic, not for a review, so not for this video, but it is to make content for Steiner themselves, uh, separate of this video. Uh, we never talked about doing a review, we never talked about me actually doing anything for myself, it was strictly, here's an optic, can you make some content for us? That's it. Now, as you can see, I have this mounted to my MCX Virtus. I love this rifle. This is my favorite rifle. I have usually ran an EOTech on this for about three or four years, uh, and I decided to switch it up. Let's, let's try something else. I have never ran anything other than an EOTech on this. Well, I guess whenever I first got it, I didn't have any optic to put on it, so I just put a Romeo 5, but that was like a couple of weeks. Anyways. We switched it up. The EOTech that I did run on this was at a 226 height. I have this currently at a 193 height mounted on the Scalar Works Leap uh, 01 mount, I believe is what it is. And I'm really liking the height that it is currently at. I've been running this on my rifle for about two weeks now for dry fire, low light, and daylight shooting. And so far, I'm actually really liking it. Let's dive a little bit more into the features it has. Like I said in the beginning, it features three reticle options. It is a two MOA dot, two MOA dot with a circle and a regular circle, and that circle is 60 MOA. I'm a little confused about the 60 MOA circle on its own, uh, just because, I don't know why. <laughs> That's like running an EOTech with just the 65 or 68 MOA circle on the outside and no dot on the inside, kind of weird. But I asked my contact, I was like, is it for shotguns? Is it for like a piggyback on a, a PRS rifle or something like that where you can kind of just circle the target in the distance and then switch your magnified optic? Uh, he said yes to both of those. So uh, I guess that's what it's for. Or like I said, shotgun, you could place it on there and use it for all your 12 gauge spread Maybe it would fill up that entire circle. I don't know, I'll have to test it out. I'll have to put this on a 1301 and make a video about that. The other two reticles that it has are actually very useful. Uh, like I said, the two MOA dot, which is the usual for all these kind of tubular optics on the market. And then uh, the second is the two MOA dot with the circle. They, they both are, I can see, being very useful. I, I've used both, I've shot with both. I, I seem to prefer just the single dot, which is weird because I really like the EOTEX, which is like a 65 MOA circle with a dot in the middle. Uh, but for some reason, I think that this one works best with just the dot. That being said, the dot is very, very crisp. So is the actual 60 MOA circle. I mean, there's no bleed. I do have an astigmatism. I, I, as you can see, I'm wearing glasses, but uh, both optics, I mean, this and the EOTech haven't really been an issue for me. This, I kind of expected to have a little bit of starburst because that's sort of what's happened with me before on LED dots, but no starbursting, which is great. Um, the Like I said, the 60 MOA circle is very crisp. Uh, it's very easy to use. So yeah, I could see people using both of those reticles for sure. The battery life is 50,000 hours. That's right, 50,000. That is the sort of usual on the market for these tubular style red dots. 50,000 hours is, I believe, five years. Yeah, you can do the math. You can count every single hour. Uh, don't divide by like, 24 or anything like that, don't do that. And let's say it wasn't, let's say it was 25,000 hours, which is half of that. There was still, and I did see people online, someone put somewhere that it was 25,000, but on their website it says 50,000, but someone said it was 25,000 and they were complaining about that. Imagine complaining about two and a half years of life on a single battery. Imagine complaining about two and a half years of a constant on optic. That's right. You are lazy and I think less of you if you do that. 
This does not feature any type of shake awake or motion activated technology that turns the optic on. Uh, it's just always on. It's a constant on optic. The dial up top goes from zero to 11, uh, zero meaning off and all the others meaning on. It is a sort of step design where it's one up or one down. It's not one up and then it's off and then one up again and then it's off. It's just one, two, three, four, all the way to 11. And then it goes back to zero. This is a T2 footprint, which is great because there's a lot of mounting options for a T2 footprint. I believe they also call it a micro footprint. I don't know, let's just call it a T2 footprint. But this does come with actually two mounting options in the box, unlike a T2 or most aim points. Uh, it does have a low mount that is sort of flush with the rail itself, and then it has a high mount, which is, uh, I'm not going to say it's super high like this 193. I'd say it's in the middle between the low and the 193. I just prefer a 193, so I switched it out, but both of the actual mounting options that it comes with, they're, they're great. They, they seem very rugged, and I don't see anyone really needing to switch it out unless, like I said, you want to have a higher uh, mount. A little side note here, this also has a 24 millimeter objective lens. You can see right here, it's nice and wide. It's, I saw someone actually talk about, this almost looks like an MRO and a T2 had a child, a, a bastard child together. And that kind of, that kind of resonates with me. <laughs> uh, it doesn't look ugly to me. It's, it's a nice size. It's not too bulky, but it's not also super micro like a T2 would be. Uh, I, I think it looks great, but the actual uh, lenses do come with clear covers with Altho. <laughs> Altho? Hmm. Also has a uh, protective cap on front, which you can flip up and, and flip down. I just ripped those off just because I didn't see myself using those too much. If it breaks, then I get to gripe about it. Lastly, this optic does come with a three-year electronic component warranty and then a lifetime warranty for all other components other than the electronics. Although I'm not sure you'd need to actually use that warranty. I did see a video from Beyond Seclusion where he torture tested this thing. He threw it in hot water, 130 degree water and left it in there for half an hour and then put it in uh, the freezer and then put it in a block of ice and dropped it from two stories high on its own and stuff like that. And it worked just fine and returned to zero and everything was great and nothing broke. So this does actually seem like a tank of an optic. Now let's compare this to a handful of other optics on the market that are popular or uh, maybe within the same price range or, or something like that. We're just gonna, I'm gonna throw up a little table and we're gonna talk about the comparison between this and those optics. And no, I'm not going to include an EOTech uh, SIG Romeo 8T uh, UH1. Uh, I, I think the EOTech and the UH1 are on their own. I don't think they should be compared to any other red dots because they are not red dots. They are holographics. They're completely different technology. Uh, they do have a red image, but it's not an actual red dot. It's something completely different, wizardry. So shut up about that, please. All right, so here's a little chart that I made myself. Yes, that is my artistic ability. As you can see, uh, there's a handful of optics here. The T1XI is at the top. Then following is the Comp M5, the T2 and the H2, all of which are aim point. Then you have the SIG Romeo 4XT Pro and the 4T Pro, which are pretty popular and I think a lot of people like running those. And then you have the Trigicon MRO HD. And then I threw in two little sort of wild cards that I, I know a lot of people are actually running and uh, enjoy running and it's becoming a little more popular is the Hollow Sun Ames Core and then the um, Aimpoint Acro C2. Now you can refer to the chart or the actual bar graph there looking at the price versus model. The T1XI, like I said, comes in at $700 MSRP. You may be able to find it in uh, other places for a little bit cheaper, but where I was looking, I, I found it, everyone was basically selling it for 700. A lot of the aim points are pretty expensive. <laughs> I mean, the, the cheapest one is the, well, I guess the Acro, but, uh, let's go with the tubular optics. So the H2 is $840 MSRP. And I'm actually, I don't think that comes with a mount. No, it doesn't. So the H2 and, and the T2 and the Comp M5, those prices are all without mounts um, because that's what 
usually comes in the box. If you wanted a mount, it'd actually be more expensive than what I have listed here. As you can see, the cheapest on that bar graph there is the AMS Core, and it comes in at around $300. So I could see why a lot of people would want to run that. I've heard good things about that optic, but um, that's also sort of not really a tubular optic, and it's I'm going to say it, it's not really proven itself to me. Um, I know I'm just a nobody, but I still don't trust it. As you can see, the battery life versus model for everything but the Trigicon MRO is 50,000 hours, so that is five years. The Trigicon MRO HD, I don't know why it's so low. Uh, <laughs> it is only 21,000 hours, but like I said, that is still around two years of battery life. That is a lot. I mean, I know a lot of people like to change out their batteries on their optics once a year, uh, just switch them out on their birthday or something like that, or on the first of every year or something like that. So that shouldn't really be an issue for the MRO. And the last bar graph I have there is the weight versus model. This is in ounces. As you can see, the T1XI at the top is not the heaviest, but it's definitely not the lightest because, uh, I mean, it is large larger than the T2 and the H2, as well as the Acro. Um, but I mean, it's not extremely heavy by any means. So it's sort of in the middle of the pack there, maybe a little toward the top, but I really don't see that being an issue. Now let's go up to the actual chart up top and go through each of these. So the price we already talked about, battery life we also already talked about. Now the Shake Awake. You can see there's only actually three optics that have this shake awake or, or motion activated technology in them, which is the Romeo 4 XT Pro, Romeo 4T Pro, and the AMS. Now, I don't know if those actually contribute to the 50,000 hours or if that is added on top of that 50,000 hours. Uh, I don't know how they actually came up with those numbers, if they actually included that or not. Now let's look at the day modes for each optic. It seems like the T1XI, again, is sort of in the middle of the pack here. You have the Romeos uh, coming in at 10 day modes and the H2 at 12. And then you have the lowest is the Comp M5 with six. While the T1XI has nine, the T2 has eight, and the Acro and AEMS also have eight and the MRO coming in last place with the Comp M5 has six. Now, night vision modes. I know a lot of you guys really uh, need night vision modes, so I uh, decided to include that in here. The only one that does not have any is the H2, which is Aimpoint's uh, cheaper tubular optic there that I have. The rest of them either have two or four. The number of mounts, the T1XI actually comes with two, like I said earlier, which is one more than any of the others. Some of them, like you can see here beneath the Comp M5, the T2 and the H2 don't even come with any. <laughs> like I said earlier, you can order those aim points to come with mounts. It is going to cost you a little more though. Now, as far as reticles, the T1XI does have three reticles. Uh, the rest of them are mostly around one to two, but the Romeo 4XT and the 4T Pro actually have four, which is interesting. Now let's go to weight. Uh, the T1XI is sort of in the middle of the pack here, like we saw on the chart. Um, it, it's not super heavy, not super light, just sort of there. I decided to include the warranty because I know a lot of you guys actually do buy based on warranty, even though I don't think that should be a main factor. It should so sort of be like a very, very side factor. But like I said, it does have a three-year electronic component warranty, as well as a lifetime for all those other components. The dot MOA size, I decided to put in there just because we did have a one-off with the Acro coming in at two and a half MOA for some reason. And then I threw in a last little category there. If the optic itself is a brand name, and what I mean by that is sort of whenever you think of uh, a vehicle, uh, a, a nice vehicle with a brand name, BMW, Mercedes, Chevrolet, whatever. I mean, you, you think of high brand names. Same thing with optics, I, I think, where they have the brand name and brand loyalty. I included this because I just thought it'd be funny with the AMS. I still don't trust Hollow Sun, so I put that as a no. It does not have the brand name, <laughs> even though I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys really, really like Hollow Suns. Uh, this is probably going to get me some really bad comments, but I, I just don't trust Hollow Suns, and I don't think that um, 
they are a brand name yet. I don't I don't think they've they've done it. I know a lot of you guys are are really really angry now. But when compared to all these other premium optics, Steiner Aimpoint, Trigicon, and you also have Sig Sauer in there. Uh, I, I don't know. To me, Hollow Sun is kind of a, a low one there. So that is my overview for the Steiner T1XI. So far, I really like it. I like the footprint. I like the look, feel, the performance of it. Uh, I think everything's going great so far. I do hope to start seeing this on more rifles because uh, I, I, again, I think it's a great optic. I don't know why I'm not seeing it on a whole bunch. Everyone's going for the more expensive. Maybe it is because of the brand name, like I said, Aimpoint. You're, you're seeing a lot of those on cool guy rifles. It has proven itself, um, it, but I, I think I think this should really be considered for those of you that want something similar to an aim point, but maybe you just don't want to get an aim point. Maybe you want to get something cheaper that does the same exact thing and looks great and does everything the same way. This has the same features, has more stuff in the box, has a better warranty on it. If anything changes in the future, I will be sure to update everyone on my social media pages on if maybe something breaks. I don't know. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying if anything changes, I'll update you. As always, I'll see you on the other side.